Hello and welcome. I'm Marimba. Thank you for joining me. This is Let's Play Faster Than Light Trial 3, or Run 3 as we can call it. Now, since we've beaten the game at least once, let's take a look at some of the achievements that we've, we've gotten. We need to have two out of three of the available achievements on a specific ship in order to unlock an additional layout, which changes the starting position of the, like where everything is on the ship, changes whether you have certain heroes or our crew members or not, and even can change the weapons that you have. So I would need to have six unique aliens on the Kestrel. I did have every system and subsystem installed at one time, so I did do that one. And repair back to full health when it only has one HP remaining. I thought I did that. Maybe that was on the other playthrough. But um, yeah, now I do have some other ships. Let's look at the list. I unlocked the NG Cruiser, and I also unlocked the Federation Cruiser as well. This ship features the latest in Federation technology, an advanced beam weapon. So this one's kind of cool because it's got this um, this artillery beam. Powers a slow, high-powered beam that pierces all shields and does one damage per room hit. More power means faster cooldown. This thing is, is pretty, it's pretty slick. The, um, the other one, the NG Cruiser, is the NG like race that's their ship and this one's more focused on drones and using ion blasters is something that they're pretty good at. So you start off with a lot of subsystems. You've got the drone control, you've got your missiles, you got, you know, normal stuff. But um, yeah. So I think let's do I want to do the NG. I want to play as the NG. We get two NGs to start off with. We do start off with a augmentation. Floods the ship with NG nanobots, healing the crew even when they are outside of the med bay at a reduced speed. So that's kind of neat. Uh, let's do this one on. Uh, let's just do it on easy. I, I don't mind it being on easy mode. The first few playthroughs, I just want to get more of the ships unlocked. So the data you carry is still vital. I agree. It is. We should probably get people working on stuff. So let's take. I want Justin to be the pilot, because the pilot kind of just camps out and never really moves. And we'll have you go and work on missiles. I don't think having someone in drone control really affects anything. So you go tend to the shields then. No, engines. Engines and weapons are more important to me than shields. Now we've got a lot of power, but we need that power for our drones. We've got to power the weapon as well. No missiles. Plenty of fuel. Let's get started. No sense in going to the store quite yet. We could go... That store is really poorly placed. Let's check out the distress beacon to start. You find the source of the distress call, a small research station. It appears a small laboratory fire got out of control and is threatening to destroy the station. Ah, uh, sure, let's just dock. You locate the highest concentration of life forms and bring the ship alongside the station. Before you can begin to offload the survivors, a huge blast splits the station apart. Your ship is thrown away and some debris pierces the hull. You watch helplessly as the last of the survivors are consumed. And we did gain some scrap, but we took hull damage. So it's kind of a... kind of a... a wash. There are only two ships within range. They seem to be engaged in a battle. Let's help. You power up your weapons. Now let's look at the way that combat works for this. So you got an ion blaster. Now ion weapons don't do physical damage. They cannot kill a ship. It's not possible. But what they do is they lock weapons or shields or whatever down for a period of time. So they're very good at piercing shields because even if the shield absorbs the blast, it affects the ability of the shield system to generate shields. So we're just going to set the... Let's set the ion blaster to auto fire on the weapon system. It's just going to continue to pound away at the shields until it can reach the, the actual... Um, the actual weapons room. And after it fires, it fires very quickly by the way, after it gets the shields down, we pretty much have to deploy an anti-ship drone. And let's go over there. 
Because it's the only way we can really do any damage. We can't kill with the Ion Blaster. But it's very effective. It's going to keep his shield system completely useless. And we're done. Now, essentially, we lose a drone every single time we, we kill somebody with our current weapon systems. Gain some fuel, some missiles, and uh, yeah, we actually were managed to, to kill him fast enough that the civilians were still here. All right. You know what? Why don't we? Let's, it's, it's an extra jump, but 71 scrap. We might be able to get something useful from this store right off the bat. What do you got? Uh, more weapons. A fire beam. I love the fire beam. <laughs> oh, jeez. Should I get this fire beam? I think I want to get the fire beam again. Or we could get a small bomb. We don't have very many missiles, though. Let's go with the fire beam. Although we already have a drone bay, we could use multiple drones. An anti-ship beam drone. No, I want to go with the fire beam. Ah, it's such a toss-up. I don't know. What do I want to do? The problem is that in order to use the fire beam, I'd need two more power on the ship's weapons. So it's going to cost 85 more systems just to get the weapon control up to the amount that I need. And then I'm going to need to get two more power as well. So it's going to cost me like 135 scrap plus the 70 to buy the weapon. So about 200 scrap altogether to get the fire beam operational. Whereas I already have three power to the drone control, and this anti-ship drone only uses two. Oh, jeez. It's, it's a fire beam. I have to get it. I have to. What I can do is I can use the ion blaster to take down the shields and then charge up the fire beam. I can use both. I can toggle them. And eventually I'll have enough power to use both. So yeah, that was fun. I love the fire beam. My favorite toy. Ooh, we're in a storm. You jump into the middle of a plasma storm. Multiple recently incapacitated chips loom in the shadows. Now let's search anyway. Hey, a pike beam. Sweet. More weapons. This thing. Oh, let's check that out. That is good luck. A pike beam is really good. It only takes two power, um, but it only does one damage. But it has a huge, huge attack. Um, like, it, it covers, like, an entire ship. So if you can take down their shields... The pike... Okay. I shouldn't... Yeah. It wouldn't have worked that way if I had... If I hadn't bought the fire beam, we probably wouldn't have gotten the pike beam. But the pike beam, way better than a fire beam. That'll be fun to play with. Now we really need to get that system powered up. No attack comes. You jump into a calmer part of the nebula. However, your relief fades as a rebel scout jumps to the beacon. Now, here's the thing. This ship does really well against... Basically... It seems to me like it does really well against every enemy except for boarding parties. Because your NG are very poor at physical combat. Oftentimes you want to try to get an anti-personnel drone to defend your ship. Because that's like their only main weakness. Because the Ion Blast 2 can very quickly charge up and take down just about anything. So we'll put this on auto fire on the weapons again. See, we're, we've already completely dis... Like, in just a moment, we're going to completely incapacitate the ship. Except for that missile. Alright, we'll go ahead and use the anti-ship drone. I'd like to try using the pike beam, but I think that that shield would come online before I could actually deploy it. So we'll just do this. We'll just let the little, little guy shoot away. Two power, and he just fires away. Easy peasy. Nice. Some stuff.
This drone isn't looking for you. Perhaps it's scouting ahead for the rebel expansion. Either way, we're going to kill it. Ouch. Just in case there's a fire in there. There could be. Come on, stop missing. So when it's flashing blue, it's got that ion thing going on, so it can't actually use the features of that ship's that room. So by shooting the pilot's room, we're making it so they can't dodge for a moment. And we collect a little bit of stuff. Because we have a beam weapon, we can carefully cut the ship out. You arrive at, a sm at the distress beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a rock with pirate markings partially crushed. Let's try to get him out. You use your beam to make a few precision cuts in the asteroid. The ship gives a quick burst of thrust and the rock crumbles away. They thank you and offer some of the resources they have collected. That's nice. You come across a pirate in hot pursuit of an unidentified ship. Now let's kill him. I like to kill everybody. I'm going to wait for my first pulse to hit them so that the first shot actually hits their ship. Fine, our previous offer was not generous enough. Nope. We're going to kill you. I like to kill everybody. The weakness as well is that if you run out of drones, then you're completely powerless. <laughs> so keep your drone control high. Thank you. Thank the heavens you showed up. We don't have much to offer as a reward, but our engine engineer should be proficient enough to patch up your ship. We didn't suffer any damage, so that didn't really help us much. Upon completing our jump, we receive a message from a nearby ship. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. No. And I noticed I actually have extra power. Might as well do that. All right, same as usual. Status quo. He actually shoots pretty darn quick. You'll find that with this ship, the first sector or two are very easy. Because it's just one level of shields to to power through. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap. I agree. Very useful. You detect a rebel scout. Let's defend. He's got his own drone that he's attacking me with. That's okay. This guy can't actually do any damage to us because it can't penetrate our shields. So it's completely worthless. And we've already got them in a position where we're going to completely lock down their shields and, and weapons. See how easy it is? Very simple. All that it costs is one drone. Thank you. More stuff. All right, let's see if we can get that pike beam online. Need two more power to this. Two more power here. Yes. Now we get a pike beam. Even better. An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand over one of your crew members. It will never surrender. 
I'm actually going to not deploy my anti-ship just to demonstrate the pike beam and actually to see if we can get by without actually using the pike beam or without actually using a drone rather this ion this level 2 ion blaster can pretty much mitigate all of his offense and defense so let's fire our pike beam and look at this arc so everything in there is going to take one damage every room so we want to hit as many rooms as possible like say that actually let's go like that right there that should hit one two three four five rooms one two and let's, they'll give us a slave I like getting an extra character or an extra crewman really early in the game like this so sure another human good you can go in the shield room that's nice the pike beam is going to make it so you don't have to use a drone on every every map which is pretty nice let's head to the exit You've arrived. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short-range scanners may discover useful materials while we wait. Let's explore. You discover the remains of a ship embedded into an asteroid. It still had some functional missiles. Nice. And let's jump to the next sector. We will go to the NG-controlled sector. That's our homeworld, basically. Alright, I'm going to wrap this one up here. In the next video, we will continue this series. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.